What's up everyone, it's Brace from LangChain and I'm super excited today to show off our new project LLM Manager. This is a LangGraph workflow for handling approval requests from users. It uses memories and human in the loop to generate these memories to then use in future iterations so that it can learn and improve over time. We built it in a way to be generic to work for a wide variety of approval requests such as pull request reviews, right, saying yes you can merge this, no you need to make changes. Uh, reimbursement requests, hey, I want to attend the interrupt conference from LangChain, can I go? Um, something like, hey, I want to start this project, right, project requests, and so on. It's set up to work with any type of approval requests. As long as you can specify some approval and rejection criteria, this LM manager can take that and then learn over time based on the requests it sees and the feedback it's able to get from those requests from the human and update its memory bank with different types of memories such as reflections, few shots, and so on to then be used in further runs where it generates some reasoning and makes these decisions on whether to approve or reject. So if we look at this high-level diagram, we can see the way it works. We take in the user's request. We then reason about that request using our memories and examples and whatever else you want to store as your memories. Pass that to an LLM, and we have it generate a reasoning report. We do this before generating an answer because we want to say, hey, LLM, here are some memories, some context, some uh, the user's request, reason about whether or not you should approve or reject this based on this reasoning criteria or approval criteria and these memories we've generated from previous runs. Don't make a decision, just think about the pros and the cons and generate a report. Then in a second step, we can say, hey LM, here's this report on whether or not to approve or reject uh, this user's request. Give me an approval or rejection and then an explanation behind that. And we ask for an explanation because we then interrupt and wait for some human feedback. Here, the human can either accept what, what the LM generated, right? They say, yep, you want, we want to accept this and I agree with your explanation. It can totally rewrite everything, right? It can say, no, we want to reject this or we want to accept instead of rejecting and change the explanation. Or it can just change the explanation, right? Let's say uh, the user does want to approve this request, but the explanation the LM generated is flawed. It can then edit that and we can take these edits, right? Either both fields or just one and perform some sort of reflection step on that. Uh, by default, this graph tries to extract some memories, right? It first uh, generates a reflection summary saying, where did things go wrong? And then from there, it says, okay, take this uh, summary report on how you messed up and extract some core memories, some core reflections to then store and use uh, in next iterations as these memories are examples. So the really important part about this graph is the way we generate and store memories and the different types of memories that we store in order to allow the LM manager to improve and learn over time based on this human feedback for that very specific task. So that is how it works at a high level. Now we're gonna jump into the code and see uh, all the nitty gritty details. First things first, you wanna go to the LM manager GitHub repo and copy the Git URL, clone that and open it up in your IDE. Once that's done, we can go into the very first file we're gonna look at and talk about all of the individual steps. So once it's open your IDE, you're going to want to go to the LM Manager directory and then the index.ts file. Here is the main top level graph for the LM Manager where we call all the nodes we see on the left. So as you can see, the very first step is the reasoning graph. We're calling this as a subgraph, um, and right now it's just a single node, initial reasoning, but you could totally expand this to be much more complex, uh, fetch in different data sources, do different reasoning about different parts of the request, um, and so on before generating that final report. So we implemented it as a subgraph just to make it easier to expand in the future. Right now, we just have this initial reasoning node. If we open this, we can see there's a prompt, just calls the model, uh, passing in the system prompt and then the user's query, this is the request, and it returns that. Let's look at how it does this. So first, we call this build context function. If we open this up, we can see what it's doing is it's searching for few shot examples and getting the reflections. For the few shot examples, every time the LLM uh, takes in this request, goes through the whole flow and finishes, as long as the request was um, approved or rejected, right, and not just outright ignored, we save that in the LangGraph store. We're saving the initial request, the explanation, and the final answer that the LM generated. We then embed all of the queries, so the, all of the requests, and then we can use semantic search to fetch semantically similar past requests from our few shot examples to ensure that all of the few shot examples we provide for this new request are going to be similar to um, what the actual request is uh, because we don't want to just be pulling random few shot examples that aren't relevant at all to this new request because that's not going to help the model. So we pull semantically similar requests so that the examples are highly relevant to what the new request is. You could also expand on this to say right now we pull 10 total requests but you might want to pull 
five accepted requests and five rejected requests that are all semantically similar, um, which is once again why we made this reasoning a subgraph because there's a lot of ways you can expand on this. For reflections, super simple, just get the list of reflections from the store and return that. So that is our context builder. Once we have our few shot examples and our reflections, we're going to format that into the prompt, uh, basically just stringifying it and wrapping it with uh, XML tags like we see here. And pasting it all in, we see we have all the examples. And then for each uh, individual example, we uh, map that with the example, the uh, input, the request, the explanation, and the answer, uh, the reflections. And then we also have this step for the approval and rejecting rejection criteria. These are two configurable fields, which you can uh, attach to your model just saying like at a high level, these are the kind of requests you should accept or you should expect. And then these are the criteria for approving and rejecting the model. Uh, these are all tied to assistance, same with the few shot examples and the reflection. So you can have the same graph, right, deployed on LangGraph platform, uh, but you could have 10 different assistants for 10 different approval pipelines, like say pull request reviews or a new project requests or expense requests and so on. And they can all be tied and namespaced to these specific assistants. And that way you won't have to worry about, you know, having this uh, go through and approve or reject a pull request and then get another request for approving or rejecting an expense because those are totally different things. So you're gonna want to break that into uh, different areas. So these are all namespaced by uh, assistant. And that's how we format the prompt. So once we formatted that, we get the model. Uh, you can configure this model to be uh, anything you want, Anthropic or OpenAI. We then invoke it with the system prompt and then the query and return the generated reasoning, which is this reasoning report we ask it to generate, and the prompt context. This is the full uh, formatted prompt containing the approval, rejection, reflections, and few shot example. Uh, and this is because we're going to want to use this in the final answer step, and we don't want to have to redo all of these different computations. So after we generate this reasoning, our subgraph ends, and it returns back to the top level uh, LLM manager graph. We then route our reasoning step to the ref sorry. We then route our reasoning step to the final answer, uh, which takes in, as we can see, takes in the generated reasoning, the query, and the prompt context, and it says you are highly advanced uh, LM or AI manager tasked with approving or rejecting one of your employees' requests. Here's their request. Uh, we then state some uh, documentation. Right here is uh, the different pieces of context you're going to be provided. Here's the reasoning you just generated. Use all of it to ground your final decision. And then we restate the employee's request. Uh, this is actually from an OpenAI paper they just put out on prompting, where they say you should always include the request at least in the beginning, and ideally at the end as well, and never just at the end. So we state the request at the beginning, the LM takes that in. We then give it all the context it should use. It takes all that in, and then we restate the request once again, just to make sure it's top of mind in the LM request. We then have a tool which is bound to the LM and we're forcing it to call that with an explanation and status field. We want to make sure the explanation field is before the status field and that way it's going to generate its explanation first before generating its status. Uh, that's because we don't want it to generate approved and then try to explain that, right? So we want it to explain its reasoning and then generate the status. And then we return that in the answer field, uh, which is you know just containing the explanation and status. So after generating the final answer, we go to the human node, which is going to interrupt. Uh, I'll open that up in the agent inbox in just a second. And the user can either ignore, accept it, or edit it. Um, and then we can take that and process those responses and either route to the end or go to the reflection step. We go to the end if no changes were made, right? If the LLM got it right in the first try, just finish, we're all good. If the user did edit something, then we're gonna wanna go to the reflection step and see where do we go wrong? How can we fix that for future processes? So once an LLM interrupts, we can see it's opened in the agent inbox right here. We have docs in the readme on how to set up the agent inbox with the LLM manager. Uh, but let's say you get a request, you can then open up that in the agent inbox and we can see the LLM decided to be approved. So the request was, I'd like to explore iterating uh, AI into our customer support chatbot and so on. The LLM said, yep, I'm going to approve that and then gave this explanation. If I disagree with this, right, I can say rejected and then say, we don't want any AI features in our product. Now, if I go and submit this, we're gonna see it notice that I made some changes to the LLM's request, and it's going to route to the reflection step and perform some re reflection comparing my response to the original generated response. So we're going to submit. We can see response submitted successfully. It then routes to the full reflection step, right? Because I updated both fields and not just one of them. Once this is done generating, this could take a second because we're using a thinking model. 
um, it's going to then go to a step which takes the thoughts on the explanation and actually extracts the specific reflection uh, pieces from that, which I'll go into in a second, right? We see the extract reflection step right there, and then it finished. It'll add it to the store um, and use that in future requests. So now that's done, let's go back to our IDE and let's open up the reflection graph to see exactly how it works. So we have it open right here. So once we're inside the reflection graph, we can see that the very first node is this route reflection node. Inside of this, we basically check to see if the change type was only the explanation. Um, and if it's only the explanation was changed, we want to route to the explanation reflection. Uh, but if both were changed, we want to route to full reflection. Uh, we have two different nodes for this because if you only change the explanation, but the overall answer, right, approved or rejected was correct, we don't want to tell the LM to reflect on everything, but instead we want to say, hey, you got the right answer, but your reasoning was not correct according to the human. Look at the differences and come up with some reflections based on that. So that's why that's one individual node. Uh, but if the LM got both wrong, right, the answer, accepted or rejected, and the explanation, we want to say, hey, everything went wrong in this step. Let's take a step back and reflect about exactly what happened, what went wrong, and how we can improve it for next time. So we route the reflection, and then we call that node. What these nodes do is they say, okay, here is uh, the original uh, generation that you produced. Here is what the human corrected it to be. Here is your reasoning. Generate a sort of summary report on what went wrong. Don't try to generate these very specific reflections, but instead just take a high level look and talk about what went wrong. We do that because we want it to first think about what went wrong and then two, extract that into very concise, specific reflections that we can use in future steps. Kind of like the same reason we separate out the initial uh, reasoning step from the answer generation. So we have it generate these summary reflections, right? We can see we just have this big old prompt uh, telling it to think carefully, generate these reflection summaries. Here is the original incorrect explanation. Here's the corrected one. Here's your reasoning. And then we also want to give it the reflections it's already generated, just so it knows not to duplicate things that it already has um, generated in the past. Once it's done that, we then return this reflection summary, and then we call the extract reflections node. What this does is we say, okay, here is, um, once again, all of that context. So the current reflections you've generated, uh, the explanation that you generated, and then the one that the human corrected it to be, all of your reflections, Take a look at all of this and extract out these very specific reflections from that. So we tell it to generate at least one, but it can generate multiple if it went wrong in multiple places. Um, and this is so we can have, you know, once again, break it down into two steps, make it a little bit easier and don't have the LLM try and do everything in a single step. So generate the reflection summary. And then from that summary, extract very specific reflection pieces that we can then store in the LangGraph store. So we call the LLM and then we just put these reflections putting in all of the old reflections and all of the new reflections. Once again, we made this into a subgraph, right? Because we know that you're going to probably want to expand this for your specific use case. So one easy thing would be to, after you extract the reflections, you don't want to just go save all the old ones and all the new ones. You could have a third step in this process, which says here are all the old reflections. Here's the new ones I just generated. Do you need to delete some old reflections, do you need to combine some, right? If you generated one that's kind of similar to one you've already generated, maybe you can combine them into one a slightly more elaborate but still concise reflection, I mean, so on. So we made this a subgraph so that it's super easy to add this customization to your graph. So that is how the LM Manager works. I hope you all found this interesting and learned something. Uh, of course, this repo is open source and I'll have all of the links to this repo and the documentation in the description. I hope to see you all building some interesting LM Manager workflows with it.